You think you are master? No, sorry, even your penis, you cannot control it. Rowan, I'll throw to you. Should we give up on the idea of humans being either inherently good or evil? Yes. Well, there we go. <laughs> you are saying this as a Christian. <laughs> we'll I'm get there, we'll get there, sorry. <laughs> yeah. no, this is the pitch, this is just the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying we should give up on the idea that human beings are essentially good or essentially evil because I can't give any sense to that question, to be honest. Human beings are damaged, changeable, vulnerable, capable, incapable. Where along that spectrum we place ourselves or anyone else is one of the biggest cultural and ethical issues we could possibly be concerned with. But we're always reaching for apparently simple answers to questions about human nature, which almost any available answer is going to be not just unhelpful with, but possibly destructive. So the short answer is, no, we should not think of human beings as essentially this or that. We shouldn't give up on the categories of good and evil, more on that later. We should think what it might be to look at ourselves and one another as, well, sites, places where very different things unfold. I totally agree. Uh, culture is contingent, uh, uh, socially uh, and so on and so on, but you have to Presuppose that this is always against a background of a certain fundamental disorientation loss which defines human species. So no, no good without evil. And I think if you think you can have good without pot evil potential, you end up doing real evil. What you brought out, this is absolutely crucial that no uh, 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 the Nazi killers and so on, they are not this demoniac romantic evil, no. They are guys who simply think they are doing the, the greatest self-sacrifice good for their own narrow group and so on and so on. Yes, I, I'm thinking about the way in which um, in the 4th, early 5th century, St. Augustine talks about the problem of the origin of evil. And I think he would he would be insisting precisely that there is no such thing as evil. Evil is not the name of something or some person or anything. So be very, very careful about giving it that kind of substance that a bush might try to give you. Out there is something evil. Augustine says we're talking about a whole range of incapacities, disasters, wounds to our perception, our habit, our, our interrelationship. That's where the language belongs. I cannot restrain from, again, referring to St. Augustine, which, who wrote a wonderful text, I hope you know it, De Nuptis and Cocupiscentia, which is wonderful. His point is precisely that sexuality is not evil, but a wonderful theory, a divine punishment for evil, which is to be like God, uh, to know too much, because uh, he, for Augustine said that eating the apple means you get to know too much, you want to be like God controlling, and then he has a wonderful theory, making some obscure Buddhist references, or to India, sorry, that uh, it, he said that there are even yogas in uh, uh, India who can even stop the heart beating. But one thing you can never control is erection of penis. That's why erection and sexuality is a sign like you think you are master? No, sorry, even your penis, you cannot control it. So I love this crazy, but let me go on to more serious stuff. I agree with what you said about this uh, 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 social nature of evil. And I'm not afraid to use the word, yeah, yeah, we should understand, look from within uh, uh, what we dismiss as evil, but please don't go into that uh, multicultural bullshit, for me at least, which says an enemy, evil enemy, is just somebody whom we were not ready to listen to, to understand. No, thanks. I, if you read Hitler, you will not discover a human side there or whatever. You will be even more horrified. That is to say, 
evil. Uh, we humans are masters in justifying horrible acts by constructing a narrative which makes them acceptable. Uh, Stalinists were masters in this and others. Here I would like to return to uh, 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 Hannah Arendt, who mentioned you. Uh, in a crucial text, early one, I think, she draws a wonderful difference between SA, the early Nazi tax, and SS. She said SA, those who were perched in 34, were vulgar, brutal evil, raping, beating, and so on. With SS, you get something much more horrifying. You get this cold, impersonal, bureaucratic evil. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.